Welcome to the HVM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. Hi, I'm Mike Hoyer, HVM Applications Engineer, and in this video, I'm going to provide an overview of perception with a couple of quick start demonstrations. This video is provided in three parts as seen here. Although we encourage you to view the entire video for a good comprehensive overview of perception, you can also forward to the beginning of any part by advancing to the time indicated here. Now before we start the perception software, we'll first point out the variety of ways a perception PC can be connected to Genesis hardware. First, a perception PC can be connected internally when it's integrated into hardware like a Gen 3i or a Gen 7i. Second, a perception PC can also be tethered, for example, to a Gen 2TB, a 3T, a 7TA, or a 17TA via a 1 gigabit or 10 gigabit copper or fiber ethernet connection. Now, also by default, the mainframe's ethernet has a dynamic or DHCP address. However, for more permanent installations, we recommend using a static IP address. Now, third, a perception PC can also be tethered to an ISO 5600M via a USB connection. Now, Perception also has two graphical user interfaces, or GUIs. The most popular is the Perception Standard, which we'll focus on in just a moment. There's also the Perception Instrument Panel used on integrated Perception PC touchscreen mainframes like the Gen 3i for quick setup and simple troubleshooting applications. We'll be focusing on the more commonly used Perception Standard GUI during this particular video demonstration. Now, to change the default startup GUI, select Preferences from the File pull-down menu to display the Preferences window, as seen here, and click on Startup in the left column to make changes in the enclosed area seen in red. You can also change the default user mode and show the Startup dialog as shown in the blue region. Now, in this example, we'll choose to show the user mode selection dialog, as seen here, so we can make our selection every time we start Perception. Okay, I just started Perception in the continuous mode. Now, when starting a new test, it's best to start with a default setting. Now, to do that, we click on Set up an auto-configured experiment and check the reset hardware. Now, if more than one mainframe is available, you'll see a complete list of all the frames that are available. You can select any ones you'd like to include. Uh, those that are grayed out are being used by another Perception PC. Here we're going to use one mainframe, and once connected, Perception automatically goes into the preview pause mode. The system is in preview pause mode. Yes, it talks to you. Now, no data is being recorded at the moment. However, this is a great way to check all your signals. Now we're going to click on Stop. Now if I click on the Record button... The acquisition has started. Now immediately, we begin recording data to the PC's hard drive because we're in the continuous mode, no triggers are required. Now to complete the recording, we click on Stop. The acquisition is complete. Now here I have the same signal connected to the first eight channels which is automatically displayed on page one. You can also toggle through the remaining pages to see the additional analog and digital signals. Now, clicking on the Recordings Navigator, we can actually take a look at the Archives tree and see that the data, because the hardware or the hard drive icon is on the Instrument Recordings folder. And this is where the data is currently being stored. If I wanted to change the location of stored data, I can right mouse click on any folder and make that the current folder. You can also change the name of the file that's being stored by clicking on the three dots here in the acquisition control panel, change the name here, or put in whatever start number you'd like to start with. And if you'd like to see all the data we just recorded, you can click on the asterisk at the bottom of the display. To zoom, you simply just zoom by clicking and dragging. Now to make measurements with cursors, you can click and drag the cursors and place them on the screen. And here's an uh, important uh, side note, a nice, nice handy tip. 
make the cursors a little bit bigger by going to the File Preferences section here for Display and use the Large Vertical Cursors by default because that's going to make it a lot easier to see the cursors and drag them onto the screen. Now for Quick Results, we can actually use the Calculator and this will enable you to calculate the statistics, cycle, pulse, and area on the waveform that's currently selected. This, in this case, it's the first channel. And these are the calculations done between the two cursors. If you wanted to change the channel that you're performing the calculation on, just click on some other channel and then recalculate. Now we're going to unzoom by right mouse clicking here on the display. Click on unzoom. We'll also remove the calculator for the moment. And we'll talk about some of the hardware settings, which we can change by clicking on the Settings Sheet, or Tab. And simply you work your way from the top and to the way uh, uh, and down here on the left column. And uh, we'll review some of the more common setting parameters here. So for mainframe at the top, this lists all the mainframes that you're currently connected to. Now notice if you wish to change the mainframe's IP settings, this is a changing menu so while you're in the settings tab or sheet click on the settings pull down menu go to mainframe setup go to the network and you can change your network parameters here now the recorder selection here lists all the recorders or acquisition cards that are currently in your system so we've got uh, two recorders we've got the 250 mega sample per second card which is a 14-bit resolution and also a 500 kilosample per second card and of course here's where you can also change resolution on some of your cards that have that capability now you also have the option to change groupings so basically recorders are separated into sample rate groups based on the card's maximum sample rate capability but you can change that so if I wanted this recorder to be in the same sample rate group as this recorder I can simply change that by selecting group 2 since B is in group 2 more on that in just a moment next is analog channel here you list all the analog channels currently in your system you can actually type a custom name for each and every channel and you can even uh, see the type of channel or card that's on each channel you can also select a sensor from the sensor database you can change the amplifier mode on any channel so for example if your card has that capability you can change on this particular card from basic to basic sensor bridge charge IEPE for example and then it will appear under your list of inputs you can also choose to whether or not you want to store each and every channel on the card the marker channel and timer counter channel are your digital channels and the more recent mainframes have more uh, basically one or more uh, DB connectors on the frame to connect your digital signals and then the inputs become active when a supported card is installed by default the time-based groups here are listed for all the different sample rate groups that we mentioned earlier and of course you can change the sample rate of the each, each individual groups you can see here in the continuous mode the different modes that are available let's move over to the input category again this is a list of all the different types of inputs available on your system which will depend on the type of cards and the selected amplifier modes in your system now going to the basic voltage mode this allows us to select a sensor from the sensor database this comes in handy because it really uh, allows you to automatically adjust all the relevant parameters for the sensor but of course you can manually make those adjustments in all these columns here for each individual channel from span to offset and even filtering and I just want to make a note on filtering that in order to maintain time alignment on all your data it's best to use the same filtering on all channels now if I wanted to change the span for all the channels on one of the recorders we'll do that here we can go to the header of that recorder we'll change this from 20 volts full scale to 100 volts full scale and see that changes it for all channels on that recorder by using this selection here for the recorder of course we can do each one individually so now the signals should appear one-fifth the size so if we click back 
to the active display and select preview. The system is in preview pause mode. We can now see the previous data was recorded with a plus minus 10 volt or 20 volt full scale span. And the new setting we've made, which was 100 volts full scale, is now plus minus 50 volts. Now to save your setup, you can go to the file, pull down menu, select save virtual workbench. And if you ever forget to save your settings, no worries. You can go to the open virtual workbench and you can actually open a virtual workbench or should I say settings file from a recording file. So if we go to our instrument recordings where we've been storing our data, you can actually pull the settings from a recording, the PNRF recording. So that's done automatically. Every PNRF recording includes the settings for that test. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to acquire data based on a trigger and then quickly set up your own custom display. Now this time I started perception in the single sweep mode with default settings, which means the analog triggering is now set up such that the first channel by default is turned on for each card and set to one volt. Back to the active display, if I click on the record button, the acquisition has started. The system waits for a trigger. Now if I send a trigger signal, the system will capture a single sweep and automatically stop. Now if I click on the asterisk at the bottom, you can see the entire sweep. Looking at the time base, we see that the pre-trigger on group 1 and group 2 is set to 20%. 10 milliseconds is the total sweep length for group 1, 100 milliseconds for group 2 because they have different sample rates. Now if I click on the header here for trigger position, I can actually set the settings menu to be basic or advanced. I can also select the sweep trigger values to be in percentage, samples, or in time. We'll select time. So here we have 2 milliseconds, which is the 20% for pre-trigger. If you click on any of these entries, you can change them. We're going to set this to 1 milli. So now this is 1 millisecond. Now, if we go back to the active display, we can see that the previously recorded signal, if I move these cursors, you can see the trigger mark here at the top. You can also see we have a minus 2 millisecond or 20% pre-trigger and an 8 millisecond post-trigger, which provides us with the total sweep of 10 milliseconds. Now we'll record a new signal. The acquisition has started. Now I'll click the asterisk at the bottom, and we see that the new trigger marker at the top is now shifted to the left. Looking at the time scale at the bottom, we got a minus one millisecond pre-trigger, and on the right, a nine millisecond post-trigger. Again, still 10 milliseconds, but now the pre-trigger is set up differently like we did in the settings menu. Now creating a custom display is very easily. We can just Click on a blank area at the top, click on New User Sheet, and then we're actually going to place our Data Sources Navigator. We'll pin that here on the left. We can actually click and drag any group, recorder, or channel onto the display. We'll drag the recorder A, and automatically all the analog channels are displayed on page 1 and the digital on page 2. So now what we can do is add another user sheet and this time we're going to click and drag channel 1 we'll click and drag channel 2 you can actually drag channel 2 to another pane if you'd like or you can just drag it back to pane 1 if you right mouse click on the display you can bring up the display window to change the display setup attributes the annotation and grid attributes the pane setup is another way of adding additional panes and setting up your additional channels. So you can bring them over like that. And you can also go to Trace Setup where you can actually add a zero line to your 
channels and traces. You can actually change your trace colors if you'd like. So very simple and very flexible. Now you can also change your layout. So you can have a single, dual, triple, or quad sections. We'll do a cross quad section here. And you can add things like a spectral display. You can add meters or a user table. We'll add uh, a couple meters here, max and min, for example. And then you can even add, let's say, the image of your test. Or if you wish, you can even add maybe a logo. It's up to you. Now you can even change the different sections and size them differently if you like as well. Now you can also export a recording very easily into over 25 different file formats including MATLAB, Excel, ASCII. In fact with MATLAB you actually can download a DLL from our website so you can recall data directly into MATLAB. Exporting data can be done in quite a variety of ways. So, for example, if you choose ASCII, you can actually export the complete recording or just between the cursors or a zoom segment, just the selected channel, just the channels in one of the panes or the entire page or display or even resample to your own custom rate. So, a very flexible way of exporting your data. You can even automate a number of different processes. In fact, you can even do that while you are recording during trigger segments. For example, you can select a variety of actions including exporting and you can actually export into whatever format you like and this can be all done automatically while you're recording. Or let's say that you've completed an entire day of testing and now you want to export all your recordings. You can batch file this entire process. It can batch file a number of different actions. We'll select export here to ASCII and then you can actually select all the files that you wish to export. Maybe these are all the files you've worked on for the day and you can actually export with the click of one button. Now to see demonstrations on creating automated formulas, custom reports, trace markers, various user modes, and much more, please view the many additional perception videos available in our FAQ video series. Well, that wraps up our Perception Quick Start demonstrations. If you have any questions, please feel free to call the HBM support team at 1-800-578-4260 or email support at usa.hbm.com.